I know, I know you're thinking it's a clickbaity title, but it's not. Let, we'll talk about that. Let's talk about facts. If you look at the numbers from a stat counter, Microsoft Windows 10 accounts for roughly 42.5% market share. It's about Windows 10. We're not talking about all other versions of Windows, which are still there. If you look at the numbers from a stack overflow, Windows 10 is the most commonly used platform by developers, followed by Linux. So that's huge. On the other side of the spectrum are data centers, um, cloud, servers, and whatnot. All of these are dominated by Linux. Microsoft's own Azure Cloud has more than 50% virtual machine that run on Linux. So even on Microsoft's own cloud, Linux is growing its presence. And we are not even talking about Amazon Web Services where Ubuntu Linux is way ahead of everyone else. And we are not even touching on public and private cloud, which are powered by OpenStack. So these are two different side of equation, the developer platform and the production system. One is dominated by Windows and one is dominated by Linux. You may ask, what's the problem? The problem is that these two platforms need to live happily ever after because these are two different words. Windows runs on a different kernel, Linux runs on a different kernel. A lot of things are different. You cannot run the same workload on both platforms. Developers, especially web developers uh, or IT professionals who run their workloads on Linux, want to have uh, the same kind of environment and same kind of uh, tools on their local machine that they run on their production systems. I manage and I run a lot of servers for my own sites. I run Debian Linux there. So on my local system, which where, which I use to develop for my sites, I need same tools, I need same environment that is running in production because this is my test and development machine. I, I, I add, On top of that, I also use tools like Vim or VI or Nano or a lot of other things are there that I need. So I do need a Unix-like environment there. So what I use is I use OpenSUSE or I use macOS when I'm traveling. I bring my laptop, a MacBook with me since Mac is native Unix. So I run all the commands, all the tools natively on this platform. On Windows, I have to make a lot of compromises if I want to develop for my Linux systems. Either I dual boot with Linux, which defies the whole purpose. That means I'm using Linux, not Windows. If I use a virtual machine on Windows, which is VirtualBox, uh, it slows the whole machine down because you have to run both platforms at the same time. So it's just too much hog for RAM and CPU. I, I cannot do a lot of things that I need to do, like video production and whatever else. So it's not a very ideal solution. The third solution is to use tools like Segwin, but they are more or less like workarounds than a full-blown solution. In either case, from Microsoft's perspective, if you want to use Windows as a platform to manage your Linux workload, you have to actually walk away from Windows to be able to get your work done. That is not a very encouraging situation for Microsoft. They need to find a solution. And that solution is WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux. Microsoft worked with Canonical, the parent company of Ubuntu, to build WSL. It allows people to run uh, Linux binaries on Windows. So when you think about WSL, you can run all the command, Linux command line tools, all the utilities, everything within Windows without having to use the Linux kernel. And it's native, so there is no virtualization there. You're running everything natively. And they have made it very easy to run WSL on Windows. All you need to do is install the latest update, which is fall creators update on your system. Then go to system settings and uh, enable WSL from Windows feature, turn on and off setting, that's an option there. And then since it's Windows, you need to reboot your system. It's not going to work without reboot. So reboot your system when you boot back into Windows 10, 
go to Windows Store and you can install OpenSUSE there. You can install SUSE Linux Enterprise. You can install Ubuntu. You can install every other distribution that is available out there. That's amazing. You can run all those different distributions simultaneously while maintaining isolation from each other. And the interesting thing is that when you run OpenSUSE through WSL, you are literally running the command line version of OpenSUSE minus the Linux kernel. So you can do everything that you do on your OpenSUSE system. Whether it's Zipper or Yast, you can run it natively. And that's what I do if I do use Windows machine because I work on the film and video production and audio production and you know I work on images so I do need Adobe's creative suite so that runs only on Windows and Mac OS so that's what I do so what happens is that I get the same environment on my local machine that I'm running on my server and it actually goes beyond that because I run a Linux server at home none of my data is saved on my laptops on my PCs everything is stored on my server I SSH into the server and copy the files locally work on them and are sync back to the server so with Windows uh, you have to I mean there may be some tools I don't use them but you have if you want move files you know to and fro you have to use it through Explorer and I don't use GUI tools to move 10 terabytes of data it's, it's, it's too risky it's too time consuming so I always do R sync and stuff like that you cannot do that in Windows very you know efficiently you cannot run a lot of command like tools in Windows very efficiently I can do everything in Mac OS or my open SUSE system but not on Windows but through WSL now what I can do is I just fire up open SUSE I mount my drives and then I can run all the commands that I need to manage all the data locally no problems that's amazing and that's getting people worried they're worried that more people will be running those Linux tools on Windows now instead of installing OpenSUSE, Ubuntu and all other Linux distributions when they can do everything they do on Linux in Windows why do they need Linux and th their fear is valid but just look at the question itself more people will be using those Linux tools and utilities and that's the answer I don't think that uh, th this is a lose-lose situation for Linux actually it's totally opposite no matter what you say Linux still has that two percent market share Windows still dominates the market and as you have seen the stats even developers prefer that over Linux if you go to any open source event I'm talking about the the, the enterprise open source event I'm not talking about them kind of stuff or kernel specific stuff if you go to any of such events all you see is Mac OS they have pure Unix they fire up the terminal and they have every tool at their disposal so they are either way not using OpenSUSE or Ubuntu or any other distribution so they are not Linux user in either case but through WSL they become Linux user because even if they are using Windows they are running OpenSUSE there and I talked to Richard Brown the chairman of OpenSUSE board and he was very enthusiastic about it and he, he said that you know through the WSL Linux will actually expand its reach it will reach out to more people who would have never used those tools earlier they would be using some workaround now they can use those tools natively and it's, it's making their work easier is that, is that a bad thing I don't think so even Mark Shuttleworth I talked to him and he expressed the same sentiments that WSL will expose more people more developers to Linux because now they can get their job easily done and it also makes life easier for IT admins who manage computers across companies you know for, for their developers so they don't have to worry about uh, virtual machines or all those headache they came they know that okay if it is a Windows machine all you need to do is just install you know a distribution that you want and it's all done it's very easy and, and, and the second point is that all the people who are worried about it just just think about it if you fear that a platform that you use can be killed because the tools that are available on this platform are now available somewhere else then I don't think that platform deserve to survive it should die because uh, it's very Apple like mentality that you know you should have a kind of vendor lock in there if, if that vendor lock in is broken then the platform will fail 
no, that's not a very positive way to look at it. And, and the fact is that, no, WSL cannot kill Linux. On the contrary, the way I see and way a lot of other people see is that Windows is actually exposing Linux to more users now. These, these, these tools and utilities are now accessible to that 90 or whatever percent of Windows users are out there. So I think that's actually good news. Windows is actually helping spread Linux everywhere. That's the way I look at it. And, and the fact is that no, WSL cannot kill Linux. Because the reason is people don't use Linux just for uh, developing for their Linux servers or production machines. There are a lot of different reasons why people use Linux. And that is why I use Linux for. I don't use it just because I'm developing it for my site. I, there are so many different I use Linux for. There are so many reasons why people use Linux desktop. And that's going to be the topic for the next video. I'm wrapping this video with this thought. Let, let, let's discuss in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think that WSL is going to affect Linux? Do you think WSL is going to actually promote Linux? Or do you think WSL is going to kill Linux? So let's discuss in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like it. And as you know, I have moved to Patreon. So if you like all my work, I just got two cameras, these expensive cameras. So please become a, my patron. And let's continue to spread words about Linux and open source. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.